we're streaming. Hi. <laughs> Bang. Change your name, Jeff. We can see your email address. Your email Bad. address. No one's gonna email me. <laughs> I'm gonna email you. <laughs> a butt. his email address. I'm gonna email him a butt. Oh, don't someone butt. should post in a thread as well. Oh um, no. Don't butt. Well, we me. don't. Oh shit! I didn't make a thread. We, what? We could just use the the fellowship thread for now. It's fine. Shit. Oh. Go ahead, I guess. Ah, uh, fuck. I'm streaming. I don't want to. I don't want to post in the thread while streaming. Shit. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me get the link. <laughs> Twitch TV. Right. Slash Batalisk. I should pause this download for now. Don't forget to turn your mic off in the roll 20. I already I did. did. To broadcast nothing. Or to see Broadcasting nothing. a fist to my face. Okay, I posted it. All right. Um, so we're going to be using Fate Accelerated in a setting based off of the Terry Pratchett story, <clears throat> uh, Carpet People, where you're all about, uh, I, I want to say less than a millimeter tall. It's probably close, maybe not quite small enough, but you're Depends very Depends how shag the carpet is. Mm. It looks like that in the picture, where it is essentially a very closely dense forest of trees, where the trees are the carpet fibers. Ah, the bounty of the earth. And uh, before we get started on the setting details, which I have a few notes on, uh, we're going to talk about Fate Accelerated. Uh, Fate Accelerated is a streamlined version of Fate Core, which is the flagship, one of the flagship systems from uh, Evil Pet Hat. Evil Hat Productions? Evil Hat Press? Evil Hat Productions. Uh, Fate Core gets used a lot for hacks of games based off of different things, like there's a Dresden Files Fate game, uh, there is a Atomic Robo RPG, there is Fear of the Century, I think it's a little older than Fate Core, but it uses the same system. But Fate Accelerated is for people who are too lazy to get into Fate proper, or don't have time, or are new to RPGs in general. Uh, it, the entire <coughs> book is about 50 pages or less, I think. It's very small. Um, and we're going to start with how to make a character. And characters have three things. They have, or they have approaches, uh, stunts, and aspects. Uh, they also have stress, but that's not important right now. Um, the big thing about fate is the aspects, and the way you start making a character is with the first aspect of that character, which is their high concept. Um, you don't have to come up with a high concept yet, because I haven't told you anything about the world just yet, but a high concept is essentially, um, uh, it's like your class. It, it is essentially who you are in a nutshell. Um, Characters also have a trouble, which is an aspect that is sort of like one of their, a, a defining character flaw. And we'll get into why that's important to have later when we go into aspects in more detail. Oh, I have um, so many of those. Hmm? I have so many of those. <laughs> the biggest part is usually what we do. Um, realizing now that the high concept is dependent on the setting, I guess I should go into the setting more. Um, so, I have a little intro thing that I want to read out first. Uh, the Xi'an the Empire was, at its height, one of the largest nations on the carpet, stretching from as far south as the gorge and beyond to, some claims, the northern northeastern corner, although no scout had ever returned from the corner to actually, you know, lay claim to that border. Uh, with the empire came prosperity. Uh, new towns and villages popped up across the... Uh, cropped up upon... Uh, up across the wilderness with roads being built to interlink them and facilitate trade. From the capital came new discoveries, inventions, and culture, uh, and the might of the Xiandi Empire, 
as represented by their elite corps of scouts, the Rangers, who settled small disputes while also clearing the wilderness for settlers behind them. The height of the Shining Empire was three generations ago. Since then, no one has heard from the capital, at least as far out as you are, in a small border village way out in the northeast. And with the fall, with the isolation came decay. The roads have not been maintained. Trade has become sort of a myth almost. Uh, the last caravan was seasons ago. And worse still is the fray. A uh, heralded by the cult of mole, a strange race of beings that are encroaching ever closer every day. And with the fray comes nothingness, absolute erasure. Mm -hmm. The fray is getting closer. It comes from the east. And the village shaman and spiritual leader, Prismire, foretells a great doom should you all stay, should the village stay where it is. However, he also brings hope. A journal by Snibril, a heroic figure in the village's legends, once a scout, a ranger for Shiandi, who, the legends tell, traveled beyond its borders and found lands of plenty and safety. He left clues, a, a trail of sorts, that if you find the signs, will lead you to safety and away from the fray. But all you have to go off is directions to go west, towards what once was the heart of the Empire, and further deeper into the carpet. So, it falls to you to lead your people to safety, wherever that may be. That out of the way, we can get into character creation now. Oh man, we're refugees. <clears throat> well, kind of, yeah. You'll be acting as sort of, not quite guards or leaders of the village on, on the move, but as sort of trailheads, uh, you'll be finding the path to safety for the tra er, for the villagers behind you. So you don't have to worry too much about their safety, for the most part. Um, so the high concept is the first thing you decide when you make a character. Uh, your character's high concept is a single phrase or sentence that neatly sums up your character, saying who you are, what you do, what your deal is. When you think about your high concept, try to think of two things. How this aspect could help you, and how might it make things harder for you? Good high concepts do both. Uh, the thing about aspects is you always want aspects that are positive as well as could lead to trouble in the future. Uh, the thing about aspects is that I, can, I, as a GM, can use them against you to make the story more interesting while also giving you a bonus to use later. Mm -hmm. Well, you can also use them for your own bonuses. Uh, the examples in the book are the the example characters that this book uses. Uh, a feline captain of the Sears, Skimmer, sun caller of the Andral Desert, chief field agent of Jima, or Ijima. But uh, your, your high concept should in some way relate to who you are as a carpet person. Uh... <laughs> Jenner, you had an idea, but I think you might have said that you might change. I think, still think it might work. Um, my character concept is um, that she is a survivor and a collector. Her name is Shara, and I believe my high concept uh, idea, which you can we can we can work through, is what we attain tells our story. So she likes to go around collecting things from the carpet, and uh, she's very inquisitive. I think that's a good aspect. I'm not sure if it's a great high concept. I would hold on to that one for one of your later aspects that further define you. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, like, hmm, it, hmm. it may be more of like you are a, a inquisitive merchant. You've traveled a lot and have picked up oddities. Yeah, well, she likes to, yeah, she, she likes to pick up odds and ends, and she likes to collect things, and... She doesn't, she always thinks stuff has value, so she has so much junk. She just has this cart of fucking junk that's just like, <laughs> like, you know, like, just like toenail clippings and, and, you know, <laughs> cat hair <Sorry>. balls. And <laughs> this is an important bit. The scale of this game, uh, fleas, 
are essentially the size of horses to you all. Oh, jeez. So, yeah, she's, they are like... domesticated animals. You know, she's picked up, like, like a giant marbles and, like, just... She no, 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 so no, much, no, 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 marbles would crush you. Like, like, you know, <laughs> granules of cat litter. You know, just, there like, we the, the weirdest shit. <laughs> you have found a shaving from Happeny. <laughs> Also, metal is kind of scarce because metal does not exist on the scale very well without finding it dropped on the carpet. <laughs> there was paperclip beyond the gorge, but no one's heard from that in decades. Uh, so yeah, something like uh, obsessive collector or obsessive... The obsessive collector might be a good one. Yeah, that um, is both positive and negative. Yeah, I I am an obsessive collector. I like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, put that. And I I when I created this roll twenty, I also set up the character sheets to use fate accelerated, so you can fill that in. Or do I have to create them for you? You have to create them for us. Okay, I will. I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. Because yeah, you have that. You can just make four blank ones. We can claim them and. Yeah. Yeah. You have to give access to them too. I think. Yeah, just hold on. And it would be much better than uh, doing this in PDF form, because this PDF is uh, not really friendly to being changed by typing. Nope. I like typing. You gotta make text You said boxes. everything, like, uh, the average height of these people is like a millimeter, you said? Less, really. Less. Hmm. As I said, fleas are horses. The size of horses to you. Uh, how do I give access to some? Okay, yeah. So, um, I know what I want. I know. What uh, I want. Hang on, I'm trying to figure out how to give access to a person. It's been too um, long. It's been so long since I've uh, looked at it. <laughs> I can go look at a game I you go, control. This should be like a. Uh, Jenner should have access to it now, to the first character. Okay. Uh, Jeff, you said you had an idea. Uh. Um. Well, let me get the character first. I can look at it. Okay. Well, first, what's your high concept? That's the oh, first thing. I, mm, um, so I'm thinking I'm going to have a guy. So if, if fleas are the size of horses, then, then like, tardigrades should be the size of, like, large dogs. So I want to have a guy who has, like... A water bear? Also be, yeah, he has, a, he has, like, a couple, like, water bear pets. <laughs> because they're basically indestructible. Do you raise them as livestock, or are they more like pets? They're companions. Okay. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So you are, are sort of an animal husbandry kind of person? <laughs> oh, hold on, let me mute my phone. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Cool? Yeah, yes, yes, it was. <laughs> 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 like a guest player. <laughs> um so yeah 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 so he's, he's uh like a um like an animal trainer maybe he maybe he uh, uh raises uh uh beast of burden and for work for other people and sells them or something or like does that for people i don't know if there's a currency or whatnot here uh, uh there probably is i haven't come up with it yet but um so for a high concept what would be hmm. the core for this character um, hmm. Still, like, not clear in how I'm supposed to format this. It's sort of like a description of who you are as, like, are you a druid? Are you a, a, a ranger? Are you a, a bard? That kind of thing, but more interesting. More than just one word. Like, the examples so they give in the book... Like... The examples they give in the book are, like, Position of a thing, position of an organization, position of a ship, whatever. So, like, if you are the the animal trainer or animal tamer, are you native to this village? Were you born and raised here, or have you traveled here and just mm. sort of settled down? You have traveled here travel around peddling uh sharing my animals with others do you sort of is it sort of like a small circus 
No, no, I think it's more like I roll in and I, I offer my services to, to tame the beasts of the wild for the use of the people. And then I leave. You are, are you the guess, dog whisperer? There we go. <laughs> I like tardigrade whisperer. I think that's, that's a great high concept. All right, cool. Travel. Uh, Fefnir, do you have a high concept idea? Um, I'm also figure, uh, trying to figure out how to uh, phrase it exactly. But, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's probably the hardest part about learning how to use aspects at the start. Mm -hmm. Is You've never done this kind of thing before in an RPG, and so it's all new and fresh, but that is part of the learning process with fate. But, uh, yeah, I was thinking of someone very, like, nature wary actually i have the old character sheets when i ran this scenario a long time ago from my previous group i could look at their high concepts to give some ideas okay let me uh let me go pull that out just a second okay i did it um my stunt is i'm gay so i'm gay and i'm gay thanks you have a guy <laughs> There's an order about this because we've never done this before. <laughs> Stunts are really, really, probably the harder part, than, harder than even aspects to explain, actually. Ah, here we, we have to learn to walk before we can run. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, the old, the, the pre first time I ran this, they somehow turned it into sort of a Star Wars story. <laughs> literally, one of the characters was named Luke Shagwalker. <laughs> So it very very quickly became a Star Wars pastiche, which I don't really want to do again. <laughs> so that character died immediately. Uh. No, no. His, his uh, high concept was an orphan whose father was a great warrior. Uh, there was also the Grand High Immolator, who was the matchstick wizard. <laughs> uh, and then there is X... An ex uh, ranger trader, as it T R A D E R. Okay, not like not like traitor. Which, by the way, no, no, no. I'm not playing a traitor or a horny character role this time. I hope. <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. Damn it's it! It's a very little bit of horny. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, I got it. You're small. Mm -hmm. You're all small. Anyway, Fefnir, you said you had something like a nature person. Uh, wary of nature person. Oh, you don't like nature? No. Oh, you're Nature's shutting. a fucker and needs to just get right out. Oh, oh you're Captain Planet villain. <laughs> Are you sort of a proponent of, like, out with the old, in with the new, bring on the great technology kind of thing? Uh, I don't know if she's even necessarily, like, technological based. Um,. So what I figure is, uh, I named her Dime, uh, her parents, uh, Nickel and Penny, uh, also <laughs> because her father was crushed by a dime before, just before she was born, and from that moment onwards, she basically was raised to, uh, basically just be kind of wary of everything out in the world that could kill you. Which is everything. Exactly. Well, being a paranoid shut-in is not a very descriptive character aspect, or high concept. Is there some other thing, other than being paranoid about all the things that could kill you on the outside, what what has Dime trained or, or developed as a talent, or like some some way of, of surviving in this terrible, terrible place? Hmm. I think she'd be a trailblazer, just clearing the way more or less very I angrily you, i was picturing like one of those crazy apocalypse preppers <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't <laughs> you have a ton of gold what if, no i don't trust if, it <laughs> what if you inherited like uh ranger equipment from your dad before he died or after he died like he was a ranger and then he died and then mm -hmm. you inherited his stuff Except it's a little crushed. <laughs> Just a little bit. Fixed. Yeah. But, like, maybe 
he he was the trailblazer of the family and like you he taught you a little but then when he was crushed you're like i don't want to go outside anymore <laughs> so she's like an unwitting heir like an, uh, yeah mm-hmm. unwitting heir unwitting daughter of a ranger i think or unwilling daughter of a ranger well i think she's willing maybe more like hyper focused maybe paranoid Hmm. What about a paranoid trailblazer? Yeah, I could go with that. Yeah. Or, or instead of instead of paranoid, maybe wary. Wary fighter. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like paranoid more. Cause yeah, like, paranoid is, is a little bit more, more abusive. I, I can, <laughs> that goes both ways. Mm-hmm. All right. And last character for Loika. All right. I think I have a high concept. Um, I like killing things with this... axes and I have no feelings. Sorry. I'm just feeding you your concept. Also, I'm a giant rat. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, Loika, go. I swear to God, if Ark is the final boss, he's a gigantic rat. <laughs> no, I don't think there's any way, scale wise, that you'd be. That is like. That is beyond final boss. That is fucking levels. Shadow of the Colossus no, level. No, <laughs> Like, there's no possible way you could even stab that thing. <laughs> ants, ants are like the final boss of this campaign. Okay. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, ants would need to go Super Saiyan. So, my high concept was a a disgraced and disgruntled prince. Mm. <laughs> I have an idea of him being the prince of a king, uh, yeah, a kingdom that no longer exists. A a prince, or like a sub sub nation to Shiandi. Is he the prince of all yeah. Saiyans by any chance? Is he you, the prince of you the shut up. space warrior? <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I didn't get back into Dragon Ball recently. You all can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Is he... I'm not owned, you're owned. <laughs> Would you say he's an anti-hero? <laughs> oh god, please. Maybe. <laughs> um, my idea was, uh, I read like a plot summary of the book, and there were the people that lived on a penny. Oh, yeah. I had the idea of people living on a chip, but the chip was bigger, so it got picked up quicker, and now it's it's gone, and he's the only <laughs> one left. Like, like... like... <laughs> One day he had fame, fortune, and like nobility, and then next gone. A chip, yep. huh? So all the salt, so much salt. Yep, he's very salty. <laughs> <laughs> I decided my characters work best when everyone dunks on them. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Those are the you best know, parts of Jack. So, <laughs> considering the setting, access to salt would be the the cornerstone of a merchant empire like a merchant kingdom well, we don't have it anymore the ship's gone yeah <laughs> <Salt> <laughs> was, with it. was it was it a was it a wavy chip a rippled chip or just a regular chip i'm curious now oh it's salt and vinegar so well, extra. But, was it, was... but was it rippled or was it not rippled the... i don't think you can get salt and vinegar ruffles oh, it was not rippled. okay it was not ripped for your pleasure okay God damn it, Jenna! You said you weren't going to be horny. I'm not. I'm not in character the yet. Character's not going to be horny. She didn't down. say that. I was here. <laughs> we need sorry. an on-screen timer for time, <laughs> time till horny. So Someone else has to handle that. I've got to pay attention to voting gauntlet today. <laughs> I'll send it. I'll send you I'll, fire emblems. I'll send the video over to the white guy. He could put time till horny in it later. Uh. For high concepts, uh, disgraced heir, disgraced merchant prince. Oh, I like it. All right. Oh man, my character and your character are gonna be bickering endlessly. How fantastic! You're gonna be like, "That's crap! It's crap! It's worthless! It's nonsense!" My character's gonna be like, "But it's shiny." Okay, so after we get the high concept, we get the trouble, which is another central aspect for your character. 
uh, I'll just read from the book right now. Uh, decide on the thing that always gets you into trouble. It could be a personal weakness or a recurring enemy or an important obligation. Anything that makes your life complicated. Okay. Um, so I'm going to keep going first. Um, so Shauna is irrepressibly inquisitive. She's just always got to investigate fucking everything. She doesn't have to figure it out. She just has to, you know, get an idea. And so she's not going to, like, fucking Velma it. Once, like, if it's, if it's bullshit, she's going to, she'll, she'll, she's, she'll drop it. But she's, if, if it's even remotely interesting, she can't resist poking her fucking nose into it and just getting an idea of what's going on. Hmm. Sum it up in, like, a small, a short phrase. Uh, so she's, she, she has a hard time resisting the, the allure of shiny things. Uh, inquisitive to a fault. Inquisitive to a fault, thank you. Yeah, I think, I think that's pretty good. You yes. stick your nose where it doesn't belong yep. a lot of the time. Yep. Done. I don't care who goes next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeff, why don't you go next? I, I'm thinking I'm phrasing. Give me a minute. Let's talk us through it. Uh, okay. Um, uh, my character, which I have named Milne, uh, he would put himself in mortal danger to save uh, one of the beasts that he loves so much. Whether or not it's even his. Like an animal, like an animal in distress kind of thing. You're like, nope, it doesn't matter how dangerous it is. Martyr for the gotta cause? Save gotta save that puppy. No, not for people. Oh. <laughs> Just for animals. Martyr to his beasts. Martyr for the... Be Martyr for the fauna? Hmm. Sure. Okay. Fefner, do you have one? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, I'm thinking... Well, I think she really gets into her work. Like, Loner's definitely going to be in there somewhere, I think, because she prefers to do her work alone, and she can get very caught up in trailblazing. She's got to make sure everything's uh, perfect, because she really really hates nature i think i think yours could be a phrase like in quotation marks so it's what you say a lot uh <laughs> is i'll do things my own way because <laughs> that's another thing uh it can be like a quote or a catchphrase or slogan that that your character has my well. my next aspect is i'm gay <laughs> god dinner that doesn't need to be an aspect <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was Just calling down. Fundamental truth of all your characters. <laughs> <laughs> Yours specifically, Jenner. Yes. <laughs> so my trouble. Gigantic inferiority complex. <laughs> I have to prove that I'm the best at everything, and I don't think I'm the best at anything. Put go uh, put gigantic in single quotes though, <laughs> because because scale. <laughs> Look, his inferiority complex is at least as big as a penny. <laughs> wow, that's a chip. On his shoulder. Yeah, God damn it. Are basically like where you build a mine to mine copper because goddamn, that's a lot of copper. <laughs> Somebody's writing down that joke. Don't ma don't at me. I'm actually reading articles on tardigrades. Right now. Oh my god, I have to link you. I have to link you something in a minute uh, that you'll have to watch later. Did you know that when uh, a female tardigrade lays their eggs, they just molt, and then the eggs are inside the the skin they molted off? Um, so you have to check out Tierzu, T I E R Z O O, and uh, check out their video on tardigrades. Uh, okay, and then. For the next part of characterization, 
we get a third. You, you make a third aspect. Uh, Fate Accelerated is really quick about making aspects. Fate Core for every aspect after Trouble and High Concept, you 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 write a short paragraph basically describing a an important time in your character's life that give them that aspect. But for Fate Accelerated, we just go, yeah, just come up with the third one. Uh, if you want to, you can come up with three additional aspects after the high concept in trouble. It will only require a third aspect at minimum. Uh, you can fill in the other two as we play and you develop the character on your own. There you go. I, I linked it in the I linked it in the chat so you can watch it later. I already found it. Oh, okay. Well anyway. Alright. So, so back to the uh, top. Uh the the book says, uh, now compose another aspect. Think of something really important or interesting about your character. Are they the strongest person in their hometown? Do they carry a mighty sword known through history? Do they talk too much? Are they filthy rich? It's just another another component to your character that is not necessarily all defining of you like your high concept. Um hmm. This might be a little overpowered, so feel so I'm gonna talk it through with you. But basically, um my character has something for everything. Like she's always got a tool for something. I was actually gonna make that my stunt, but that would give me like a plus two to everything. So instead I'm just gonna make it like a concept. She's she's got so much crap that she's always got a tool for something. Is that a little too powerful or does that work? Well the way that aspects work is that if you could conceivably apply it to a situation and you spend the fate point on it, uh, we'll get into that later, but um, it is acceptable. Okay. But, but the best way to make them is to word them in such a way that it can also be used against you because the way aspects work is that I use them against you, you get fate points. You spend fate points on aspects to get bonuses. All right, well then, it's not, she, she, it might not always be the right tool, so I don't know how to word this. She has a tool for everything, but it's not always the right tool. Like, she doesn't always know the best way to, like, apply the tool or what the best tool for the situation is. She just always has something prepared. I think another way to think about this that would be interesting would be to say, you have so many interesting things that you want to show people, mm -hmm. but they aren't always that interesting to anyone else or they aren't always apl applicable to the situation. But you have a lot of them. It is basically... Like, like you know, Ariel's collection of things from the surface. <laughs> yeah, All those, that's those that's, stuff that's, that you don't. That's kind of my concept for this. I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter, <laughs> and I've been hoarding a lot of nonsense. So. <laughs> so it's kind of like I don't know what this is, but I want to show it to you anyway. How can I condense uh, that down into like a quick statement so it's better, yeah. like a good aspect? Does anybody have? Look a... at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's Check it. Out, that's yeah. Look at this. Yep. <laughs> That's also good because I can the, the way the the term for it is compel. I mm -hmm. compel you to act in a way that is uh, going to complicate matters. Mm -hmm. You get a fight point for it. Mm -hmm. So I can compel that to basically say you stop and just want to show someone your stuff because come on. <laughs> Check stuff. out my stuff. I, I imagine her like the salesperson in Resident Evil Four who's like, hey, <laughs> just shows up. <laughs> hey, check it out. <laughs> Hey, I got a flare gun. You want a flare gun? Nobody wants your flare gun. <laughs> How can I use a flare gun on zombies? Go away. <laughs> Alright, next person. Hmm. Um, I have mine if you don't mind going out of order. That's fine. If not everyone's ready yet. Uh, my third aspect is no fear in all caps. <laughs> YOLO. I'm not afraid. No fear, YOLO. <laughs> are you gonna quote the? Are you gonna quote Dune at us at any point? Never read it. Okay, there's just. Have you have you heard the phrase "fear is the mind killer"? I think so. Okay, that's from Dune. Okay. Uh, so this aspect is, you refuse to feel fear. Yes. Which also <laughs> means I have terrible self-preservation instincts. Oh man, your character and Fetner's character are gonna get along so well. 
you may compel me on this one more often than I get to invoke it. Uh, I think I think it's sort of like you <laughs> you can compel or you can invoke it to say no fear and hold your ground and not be afraid. And I can compel it to say no fear. You put on a brave face, but deep down you're terrified. Well, I was or, thinking more like go rush into compel, that dangerous situation, can, idiot. Yeah, <laughs> do a thing that would be absurd and stupid. That's true. Yeah, to to act impulsively would be. Mm -hmm. Something, yeah. Uh, so there's my three. Hmm. Jeff? I, so since I am a, like, an animal tamer, I want M Milne to, like, have, like, uh, like, a whip or something, but it's, like, a tiny little thread, and he's always looking for a better one. Like, he's really good at it, but he always is trying to like find the next better one than the one he has now. I'm not sure if that's a defining aspect for the mm. character. That's sort mm. of like a goal, certainly something you yeah. can strive for. But what's one of the examples like a cool sword? Uh, a cool sword with a history behind it. Okay. Hmm. Oh, that's so, everything's so small. <laughs> oh. uh, I mean, pretty... I might have a cool sword. The, yeah. the, uh, everything's small, but there are still things that represent or resemble things in our own world. Like the Shiandi Empire is essentially like Rome. I would say there are bows and arrows and crossbows if you're lucky. Uh, and the Rangers did have rifles, but the, they were the only ones to be given rifles because it was so hard to make those things. Uh, hmm. What if you? What if your aspect was about <laughs> sneaking new things to, oh God, to what is domesticate? Were well, you sniffing mm. it? <laughs> no, I kind of already have that in my my. Uh, That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to uh, look at the size of things so I can see here. Hmm. No, that's all too big. That's too big. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, why not just why not well, why just animals? Why not extend it into other things? Like maybe, maybe you knew a thing or two with about mole. Um, I'm thinking, what if uh, mole's not sapient? What if uh, he's an explorer? What if he likes finding things? Like, it's, well, like, you know? Well-traveled. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, w I would have to know all of the, like, not just the, the plants, but the, the animals of the plants, because i got to feed my things. I gotta right, you got to feed the tardigrades. While who, I'm traveling. Who, whose favorite food, by the, and this isn't a lie, is, in fact, other tardigrades. Only some kinds of tardigrades. Some are, <laughs> some are nice, Jenner. <laughs> so you gotta keep your tardigrades from eating each other. <laughs> They're like uh, hamsters. Yes. Mm, yeah, some kind of like herbalism thing. A really um, fun guy. Um, because I can tell you that at this scale, there aren't actual plants. They are all pretty much different kinds of mold. Yeah, but still plants. Yeah, there's still plants. Interesting. And you can consider the carpet to be a tree of sorts. Yeah, yeah. Carpet. I, I can't think of a good way to word it, but yeah. A really fun guy. No. <laughs> uh, I, I gotta know about these plants. Mold. Mm. I'm trying to think what something that would like have positive and negative aspects. I can't think of anything. Um, mm, mm. Dabbling herbalist? Yeah, yeah dabbling not, herbalist. You're willing to experiment with new things despite what it might cause? Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, this might be poisonous, it might not. I mean, anyways. Right. <laughs> it's okay if not every aspect has the good and the bad possibilities to it, just that your trouble and your high concept have them. Or... Mostly your high concept. The trouble is usually mostly negative. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but at other aspects, as long as you have a good mix of aspects, it's, it's, it'll work out. Um, so that was the third aspect for everyone, I think. So, uh, I wait, yet. Fefner hasn't done her Oh, that's yet. right, Fefner. All right, so um, I'm going to say that one of the artifacts her father was in possession of was a single tiny shard of a toothpick that had miraculously impaled an ant that was bothering some village. Oh, oh, can it be like one of those like toothpicks that has like the mint in it? Yes. <laughs> so it smells nice all the time? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it smells nice and also is cursed. <laughs> it smells like mint and ant juice. <laughs> I think I think th so, this aspect is just the name of the sword, mm -hmm. or the name of the tooth. Wait, Splinter. Is it as big as a sword? Um, yeah, I'd say actually, I'd say it's a little more like as close to machete like as you could get from like a shard of a toothpick at our size. Which could, I mean, I I would assume that you have ways of working materials into shapes that you need them to for tool yep, making. Yep, yep, yep. So I would say that you could definitely take a shard of a toothpick and fashion it into a machete of sorts. All right. And it's also cursed because I think it contains the soul of the ant it killed. <laughs> uh, so you get, you get f weird dreams sometimes of ant. ant. You get weird <laughs> dreams of ants with a Z. No! <laughs> no. <laughs> Sad. Okay. That movie wasn't that bad, right? It yeah. was. <laughs> It, right. it, mm. So what's next? Uh, next in the book is name and appearance, but I think everyone has come up with a name at least. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Listen, it's bad because it's a Woody Allen movie. That's oh, why yeah. it's bad. Um, my yeah. character is bespectacled with purple hair, and she's freckles. It has freckles and baggy clothes, and a huge card that is just full of shit. I, I I'm thinking instead of that, what about like remember the uh the like hoarder hags from Labyrinth <laughs> with like the big like piles of stuff on their backs. Oh my gosh, yes. But like she that, still has, like a... But she still has glasses and purple hair because that's yeah, how I yeah, imagined but her. You're carrying it all around. Yeah, I'm carrying it all around in a little in a in a basket on my back. Okay, next is approaches. This is uh, approaches are descriptions of how you accomplish tasks. Everyone has the same six approaches. Careful, clever, flashy, forceful, quick, and sneaky. Now, in Fate Core, you would have skills. Skills are what you can accomplish and how good you're at the, uh, good you are at accomplishing them. Instead, in Fate Accelerated, you are just good at how you do things rather than what you are. I think I may yeah. have worded that weird, but the way you you pick uh, your approaches, you all have the, you have the same six, but you pick different. Uh, values from the ladder for them. Um, you pick one at good, which is plus three, two at fair, which is plus two, two at average, which is plus one, and one at mediocre, which is plus zero. And this is basically the number you add to your fate roll when you do stuff. Hmm. All right. I want to be forceful and quick for my threes. Uh, I no, think wait, you only get one three. Only get one three. Yeah, you get one, one three. three. Okay. Ah, crud. <laughs> That's another thing about gonna... Fate Accelerated. It, the highest you cap at is three. Uh, in Fate Core, I think the highest you cap at is five. So one three, two twos, two ones, and a zero? Yep. yep. I don't know if I should put my zero in careful or sneaky. Probably... Actually, mate. Mm -hmm. Sneaky. Your, your character. Well. Your character is paranoid, so they should be at least a little bit careful. All right. Meanwhile, be being incredibly always... careful. I'm guessing Leica is all force all the time. Uh, I went with flashy as my three. Oh, nice. Forceful still too. Okay. That makes sense for a merchant person. Yeah. I'm sneaky three. <laughs> I'm not just Vegeta. I'm a little different, guys. <laughs> No, you have Vegeta after he has a family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, do you have a family? No, I'm alone. <laughs> okay, so it's Vegeta before he has a family. <laughs> but after he's done. What's your Nappa equivalent, and when Shut do you up. kill him? <laughs> do you have a scouter? 
Stop it! <laughs> you brought this on yourself. <laughs> no, he didn't. We did. No, we yeah, still, I no, started yeah. it. Yeah, Jenna started it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for ratting me out, Jess. You said it before I said it. Yes, it's true. Okay. No, I'm... I don't have a scouter. Uh, Breadmaster can bring my nap and go with his enemy if he wants. <laughs> I am sneaky three, clever and quick two, flashy and careful one, and forceful zero. All right. Sneaky three, careful and forceful two, clever and quick one, and flashy zero. All right, I'm doing quick three, force four, and clever two, flashy and sneaky one, and careful zero. I'm not careful at all. Flashy three, forceful and quick two, sneaky and clever one, careful zero. Uh. Okay, so with the approach is done, the next things we can do for character creation are stunts and refresh. These aren't necessarily what we need to do before we start play. Uh, you can come up with stunts at least for the first session during play. Um, stunts are... St a stunt is a special trait that changes the way you an, an approach works for your character. Uh, generally, they give you a bonus to a certain approach when used with a particular action under spe specific circumstances. Um, we can... Everyone can start with one stunt, or we can, we can add them as we go... as we start playing. Um... Well, give me a good example of a, a stunt, I guess. Uh, the book actually gives a good way for coming up with stunts. It is a sort of template that you use. Where? Uh, yeah, let me look for that. Wait, where it is in the book? Oh, here it is. Uh, the bottom. Uh, page 31. Yeah, so it's basically, if the template is because I, and then in, brackets, describe some way you are exceptional, have a cool bit of gear, or are otherwise awesome, comma, I get a plus two when I pick an, uh, pick an approach, and then pick one attack, defend, create advantages, or overcome, which are the ways you use approaches, we'll get into that later, when you describe a circumstance. Okay. So it's, in this situation, I get a plus two to this approach because I have this, or I am this. Alright. Um... Hmm. You, what are the uh, approaches or uh, not the I'm sorry what are the uh, ways you try to do it you said um, overcome oh, uh, uh, a, a create an advantage overcome attack and defend those okay. are the four ways you use approaches well it's um, okay well then basically the, sorry go ahead uh, Th that is that is essentially w the action you take when you play fate. Um, okay. The four approaches are uh, create an advantage, overcome, attack, and defend. It looks like yes. Okay. So uh, create advantage is uh, anything you try to do to help yourself or one of your friends. Okay. Yeah. Um, you when you uh, the advantage you create lets you do uh, three, uh, one of three things. Uh, you can create a new situational aspect that anyone can use, uh, discover an existing a situation aspect or another character's aspect that you didn't know about, or take an advan take advantage of an existing aspect. Um, okay. All right. Because I am, um, I can't think of a good word for like always prepared. Like I, I have so much. Like I, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, I'm. Because you're a prepared. prepared. Yeah. Because I'm prepared. I'm going to get a plus two when I try to create an advantage. In what situation? Um, and with what uh, approach? When I try to create an advantage cleverly. In what situation? Uh, what do you mean by what situation? What specific circumstance would having a bunch of stuff help you with? Like so many? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Those are essentially ways to break the game a little bit, but only in niche situations. You don't get to apply it to everything. So, like, um, during in, in, during a hazard. More specific. Ah, jeez. Um, like, the ha Do we review some of the <laughs> examples? In hazardous uh, I... train, I guess. <laughs> no, that's still too vague. Forget it. I forget. Forget I said anything. I take it back. Yeah, read. Read some, please. 
Uh, here are the examples. Because I am a smooth talker, I get a plus two when I sneakily create advantages when I'm in conversation with someone. Ah. So it doesn't have to be very specific. But it also can't be, like, universal. I don't know if this is the right word for it, but I think one I'm going with is because I am thorough, I get a plus two when sneakily creating an advantage using the environment. Um... I have an idea for mine. I don't know if you're recording these, Breadmaster. Uh, uh, you put them on your character sheets, and I have access yeah. to them. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. For that one, I would only ask, in what way are you using the environment? To do what? Um, let's see. Uh, well, I specifically made it for, like, stealth-based. Um, so when trying to... Uh, I basically... Hmm. Like getting the drop on someone, or like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, when trying to be uh, to hide out of sight. Yeah, yeah. Like drop out of sight, that sort of thing. Okay, that works. But you have to use the environment for that to take effect. Yeah, specifically something in whatever room is described, or whatever have you. Uh, Loika, did you have Mine. one? Yeah, um, I've decided to call my people the Freetons. <laughs> because I am a Freeton prince, I get plus two to forceful attacks when my pride is on the line. Hmm. Describe a situation in which your pride would be on the line. Um, somebody like challenges like me to a duel, or... Something kicks my ass, runs away, and I find it a week later. Okay. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Not every fight, but any fight where it's clear that something is at stake. It's, it's not just our lives. Not just something at stake, but you... Specifically my pride, yeah. Yep. Yep. If you're not, like... If, if, if the situation has a conflict that would result in nothing actually happening to you, you would couldn't care less. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Jeff... Um, uh, there is I've another got... template to you you could use for stunts, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little trickier, I think, to make. It's uh, to do something cool or otherwise ignore the usual rules in some way. This is something like once per session, I can do this because of this. Uh, I don't usually recommend new players to fate try these because they're super easy to break. Mm-hmm. Like, like the last time I ran this, I, I didn't make that restriction, and one of them was, uh, what was it? Because I am exiled once per session, I can sacrifice myself to let others get away, which is really... That's, that's once per game, really? Yeah, yeah I should say <laughs> once per game, but yeah. he managed to do it twice in <laughs> Well, I mean, as long as you don't die on screen, you're good. Yeah. You're very good at the whole sacrificing thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, I, here's how I'm hoping this works. Okay, because I'm prepared, I get a plus two bonus to cleverly overcoming a challenge which threatens my things. So anything that's trying to steal from me, swindle me, um, talk me out of something, get something from me, uh, I get a bonus to to saying no. It's, it's my, mine. My it's my thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's prepared or greedy. Uh, because I'm greedy. Yeah. I, I, not only, and 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 can I also take the bonus to get things? So threatens my things, and I like my things is a very. <laughs> But what I consider my thing is is very it's got a very loose definition. I, I think it I think it should only apply to things you already own. Okay. Because and I'm possessed. And possessed. Yes, because I'm greedy. Okay, because I'm greedy. To the carpet, it's mine. Yes, it's my carpet. The floor is lava, no, fuckers. No. The floor is lava. <laughs> Okay, so because I'm greedy, I get a plus two bonus to cleverly overcoming a challenge which threatens my things, in all caps. Yes, I, I will accept that. Okay. Uh, Jeff? 
Jeff, I think you were last. Um, yeah, I was thinking, um, because I have a collection of trained beasts, I get a plus two when quickly uh, defending my alleys from attacks on multiple fronts. Ooh. Or like from from uh, groups, like like the small, but a lot of small things, as opposed to like one big thing. All right. I think that's pretty good. I, I think, I, I don't know how to word it, but I think this would apply to only in situations where the beasts are capable of carrying out the defense. Yeah. Like, if well, it's a situation where they're not really, like, they need, it's a situation where we need the defense, but the defense requires opposable thumbs. Yeah, how about, um, because I have a class of train beasts, I get plus two when quickly defending my alleys from swarms of small enemies. Because then, they can handle them. And if they have a bunch of them, they can, you know, yeah. do that. That doesn't require a whole lot of instruction from you, because it's no. here. It's hard to grade. Stand here. Or <laughs> here, it's hard to grade. Eat this other tardigrade. Be a big, invulnerable thing. <laughs> Just put your appendage on his forehead and press down. <laughs> they can survive in space, you know. Yeah, you're not going <laughs> to space, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> Rocket science is not something the carpet people have developed <laughs> centuries away. It would be really hard to get all the way up there, too. There's so much more distance for them, relatively. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> rocket technology would seal. take us to the table, basically. <laughs> oh, no, no. You have legends of a chair leg. That's all one word, a chair leg. <laughs> yeah, there was it a is said that there are uh, hermit whites that gather varnish from a chair leg. Gas. This is canon. This was in the book. <laughs> it's, nice. it's this uh, this large square column that you can't even see to the end of it. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. I think. Uh, yes, stunts. Oh, refresh. Uh, you also have refresh. Refresh for every character starts at three, I think. Yes, you start at three. Refresh is the number of fate points you begin a session with. Uh, if Unless you end the previous session with more fate points than you refresh, in which case you start with the excess. You, you get to keep that. Okay. Um, oh. So if you end with lower or no, re uh, no fate points at the beginning of a session, or at the end of a session, the next session you go up to three. Okay. Um, your refresh is reduced by one for each stunt after the third. So you can have three stunts for free. The fourth one costs you a refresh point. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, your refresh may never go, go below one, so you always at least have one fate point to keep. Okay. Uh, now, let's see. What does current mean? That's the current fate points. Okay, so... So you currently have three. It says current fate points, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the actions you can take. Basically, the way fate works is you describe what your character is doing. Then we decide what action that best describes what you're trying to do. Uh, create advantage, attack, defend, or overcome. Uh, and then you roll for it, applying whichever approach is appropriate and using entering aspects or bonuses that would apply. Um, there are four outcomes to any action you take. Fail, tie, succeed, or succeed with style. Uh, failure is basically you have less than the target number or your opponent's total. <laughs> tie is equal. Succeed is greater than. Succeed with style is at least three greater than. Uh, succeed with style gives you bonuses for various things. Um, do we want to go into more detail about the four actions, or do we want to just jump in? Uh, explain the four uh, actions a little bit better for me, please. Okay. Ex explain the four actions. Explain how rolling works. That's rolling. all I need. Fate die. Fate, fate uses fudge dice, which are dice that are d6s with plus minus and uh, blanks. Uh, when you roll a f when you roll for anything in fate, you roll four of them. So four d uh, the the rolling notation for roll two, uh, roll twenty is uh, slash roll four uh, df, and then you plus whatever approach you're applying or bonuses. Um, the act so you can get a range of plus four to minus four. Uh, the actions you take, uh, there is create advantage, which allows you basically to either 
use an existing aspect on the field because aspects can be on anything. They can be on equipment. They can be on people. They can be on the environment. They can be situational. Um, and you can up, you can take advantage of an aspect by creating an advantage, or you can create a new aspect that someone else can take advantage of, or reveal an aspect that you didn't otherwise know. Um, when you succeed with creating an advantage, you create a new aspect with a free invoke. Invoking an aspect, and this is true for any aspect you invoke, can either give you a plus two to your roll, and you could do this after the roll, or you can re-roll. That is the main use of aspects, is you, you invoke them to re-roll or add a plus two to your action. Uh... Normally, you have to spend a fate point to invoke aspects. Situational aspects, if you use create advantage and you succeed, you get it one for free. If you succeed with style, which is three or more advantages, or three or more success, uh, <laughs> you can twice uh, so then the pluses, they don't add more dice, they just add more successes on top of the ones you roll? Yes. Is that, is that how it works? Okay. Yeah, so when you roll the four fate die, every plus is a plus one, every minus is a minus one, and every blank is blank. And then? Then you add them all up, yep. plus, the, plus whatever situational bonuses you're applying and, and approaches, and that is your final result. And we compare that to the opponent or a target number. Okay. So, Sounds good. All right, makes sense. I'll probably need a little bit of like a, a reminding because I'm I the player am forgetful. I might as yes. well make that uh, aspect of my character too, who is also forgetful and needs to have the reminder. But don't touch her things. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the other actions are uh, overcome. Overcome. You can use to uh, get past something that's between you and a particular goal. Mm -hmm. um, taking some action to eliminate or change an inconvenient situation is usually an overcome action. It's not an attack action, basically. Okay. Um, when you fail on an overcome, you lo roll less than you need. You can simply fail, or you can succeed at a serious cost. Um, which, whatever is appropriate is the serious cost, basically, in this situation. If you tie, it's that you succeed, but a minor cost. Uh, if you succeed, you, you succeed. And if you succeed with style, you gain a boost. And a boost, why well, doesn't explain boosts right there and then? OK. Uh, <laughs> explains boosts above. All right, a boost is basically an aspect, a, a temporary aspect that you can invoke once for free, and then it's gone. Normally, when you create a new aspect in a situation, with create an advantage. Uh, the first invoke's free, but it stays there, and you can spend faint points. Uh, attack and defend are basically two sides of the same coin. You attack to do damage, and you defend against attacks. Uh, and they're kind of easy to understand. You succeed in an attack, you deal damage. If you succeed with style, you cause damage and may reduce the damage instead. Uh, you can ex reduce the damage you deal by one to generate a boost. Uh, when you're defending uh, and you succeed, you don't take damage. Your opponent doesn't get what they want. And if you succeed with style, they don't get what, you, what they want and you get a boost. Okay. What is succeeding with style? Succeeding with style is rolling a number on your fate die that is three or, uh, three or greater than the target. Okay. You basically beat whatever you whatever you're against by three or more. Okay. Yeah, and it could be that you rolled crappy, but they rolled really crappy. even worse. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so like me, how I rolled a not minus two. Very good. Okay. I have physical dice in front of me. I have a dice ring for fate. All right. Um, I guess we can give it a shot, and hopefully, I'll I'll catch on to. To it as as we as we do stuff. All right, so we. So yeah, yeah. I never actually named the, the village you're in. Uh, it is just a village out, basically in the sticks that 
no one has visited in, in a long time, and the apocalypse is basically coming, so why don't we go leave? Where do we go? And whether by election or drawing straws or volunteering, you four are people chosen to find a path to safety. Uh, we need to get under the couch. They never vacuum under the couch. What's a vacuum? What's a couch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. But valid. Those, th those are concepts you do not you do not have any mind of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a vacuum is basically just a giant black hole that sweeps across the land. Subties. All right. Where gravity reversed itself and everyone sucked into the sky. The only <laughs> really clue you have to go off of is the journal from Snibril that says the the path that he has laid is to the west, but you don't know where exactly. And there's a lot that could be found to the west. We must head west. Um, there, are, there are other villages to the west other than the, the capital of Shiandi. Um, I think I named a few. Uh, or there was, uh, there was Matchhead. Uh, and... Inspecton. Forget what Specton was. I don't think I actually defined Specton. But there is Matchhead. Matchhead is probably at least three days travel. You think. Well, if we don't have anything better to go on, we can start with Matchhead and figure out what to do from there. Okay. Um... There is the remnants of a road. There was a road once. It has long since been overgrown. Well, hmm. technically not overgrown. Because <laughs> the forest is not actually alive. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess it's the kind of thing where you press a carpet long enough in one place, it'll stay flattened for a while. But then after a while, if you don't step on it anymore, it, it sort of fluffs back. Mm -hmm. Roads are like that in, in in this world. Let me let me ask you a a, a world question here. Mm -hmm. So, is the passage of time the same as it would be for the the not tiny things, like the normal sized things, or is it like much accelerated or much? That's one thing I don't remember being explicitly clear in the book. I think because okay, here's the thing out of character, out of GM character. If we assume the phrase to be a vacuum cleaner, then it would wipe everything off the face of the earth in less than a half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a very short game and boring. <laughs> yep. So I'm willing to say that the passage of time for people on the carpet is much faster than that of above. So while the vacuuming might take place over a course of half an hour, to you, it is centuries. Or less. Probably less than centuries, actually. Now that I think about it, probably months. So day and night must be really weird in that it takes months, and, but then suddenly it's just night all of a sudden. Look, It'd be I years, really. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> There's a day and night cycle, but it is independent of the Earth's sun. God damn it. Well, yeah, it's a lamp, though. <laughs> it's the ceiling fan. I'm just gonna say it just works. It just works, <laughs> god damn it. It all just works, it's fine. We all have a, a vague legend about when it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> if you go back far enough, it gets cold. Like, really cold. I hear of a great place where there is no carpet, just shiny, slippery ground. Called Shiny, slippery the, ground the, the, that has the, nothing to eat. Yeah, nothing to Well, no, sometimes people spill crumbs on that shiny, slippery ground. <laughs> the laminate. Sounds fake. <laughs> the, the thing about the difference between carpet and hardwood floor is car a hardwood floor does not does not hold on to things. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking... Hold on to things. Even when you vacuum it, you, you don't get everything. I was yeah, talking... That's why life is possible on the carpet. 
That's why I was talking about laminate now. Laminate. We could get Lysol. Holy shit. <laughs> that would be amazing. Anyway. What's Lysol? Shut the shit. I, 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 I'm gonna do this every clog. time you bring up a concept that is not to scale. <laughs> we we've heard of a uh, of a of a different carpet that's beyond a, a, a strange flat desert. That's smooth, they call it the dead glassy. lands. Yes, but there's there is no a cover. but there is a uh, a truly uh, um, prosperous uh, uh, place beyond it, which is really just the doormat for the house where everyone <laughs> stomps their feet off when they come in. <laughs> And all that stuff falls off. It's the uh, it's the kitchen mat where the people cook on, and all the the cooking residue splatters onto it. And then so one day it disappeared when they threw it in this washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a ladder. Uh, so you want to go to match him? Yes. 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 <laughs> um. The trail has been worn to the point where like it stops some ways out from your village so someone will need to lead the way and try to navigate there hmm. who will be the trailblazer gee hmm. <laughs> perhaps it's the person who has trailblazing in her title <laughs> all right so would this be clever we'll describe the action first describe what you do to lead the way Oh, <laughs> this is going to be a very slow process uh, because Dime takes her time and she basically investigates, like, what's the ground look like here versus what's there uh, over time, moving forward and keeping a focus on uh, what is different from the environment a bit, like... It's all, it all seems to be sort of just this brush, but some of it is brush that only reformed recently. Not necessarily recent. Well, recently as in within the last decade. Yeah, more recent than ages and ages ago. You're basically looking for signs of the old trail. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was a very succinct way of saying the yeah, thing I just took markers, to say. Signposts, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be, that would probably be clever to overcome an obstacle. All right. And I have a number in my head for how difficult this is. Uh, um, I really wish that actually showed the pluses and minuses specifically. Oh, yep, you it. just have to mouse over it, yeah. Yeah, so you got three pluses and a minus, and then a plus one for your clever. So, a three, which is a success, but not with style. Um, yeah, there are... It is, it, the, the way that the, the carpet works is that the carpet trees uh, push everything out of their way when they resume their original positions. Basically, to build a road, you first have to push the carpet away to clear a path. And over time, it sort of reshapes itself. But you know what you're looking for, because you know how that kind of thing works, how, how long it takes for these things to, to reshape themselves. And so you do manage to pick up the general direction you need to go to find Matchhead. And knowing that it will take time to bring the carts of the, like the carts and families and everyone who is packing up things in the village, you, you can just leave uh, like markings on the tree, trees to, to note the path. Basically, this way, we went this way. I slashed them with my cursed sword. <laughs> like nice. um, it will take some time to get to Matchhead. So there will be a time when you need to camp. And you do find, well, like, here and there, there are patches where, like, there, there are clearings, which I said, which I guess would be where bits, or like fibers of the carpet, have been uprooted, sorta. Like it's just a, it's a, just an empty patch where there once was a tree, and that's pro or maybe a few trees. Maybe that's that's probably big enough for you to camp in. Uh, God, what do you, what do you burn? Can you build a fire? 
Do oh, we God. even need to? Like, does the, cause the does the temperature really change? Yeah, it's probably the same. It's just all trapped within the uh, carpet. Uh, normally you wouldn't need a fire to sleep by, but there have been, shall we say, incidents in the quote unquote night. God damn it! I. <laughs> Now that we've brought that up, it's going to bug me the entire time. But there is a day and night cycle, <laughs> goddammit. There's a day and night cycle because I need it to. There's a day and night cycle because uh, occasionally there's a window and a cloud goes in front of the sun and everything is dimmer. But because it's not I, regular. Because I said so. <laughs> um, you would not ne necessarily consider building a fire normally because there wasn't there isn't really need to, except for the incur the incidents involving wild animals lately. Animals in this case would probably be parasites of sorts, or might mites mites yeah yeah like dust mites um, yeah scabies stuff like that yeah and because and ever since the fall of Shiandi, they have gotten a lot more aggressive. Because no one is keeping the roads patrolled and making sure they don't incur in, incur on civilization. So, who would stay and watch first? Um, I would because I could have my animals um, alert me to any danger that approaches. I will allow this if you only if you describe to me what noise the tardigrade makes. Uh, I feel like they make kind of like a, a snuffing noise, like. Of like a chuff? No, more like just like a, a heavy sniff. Like they're always got sort of a sinus allergy? Yes. Yes, they wheeze a little bit. I also imagine they make sort of a, 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 a gooshing noise. Cause their yeah, because they don't, they don't actually breathe. They, they breathe through their skin. So they and don't they actually move, have like lungs. They move through, I forget what it's called, but it's basically water pressure where they... They push water into their limbs to extend it. They remove water to pull them up. Yep. They basically use little pistons. Yeah, yeah, and they and they, they kind of look like bears when they walk. That's why they're called water bears. Yes, and what are their names? Oh, oh, geez. Um, you have to have named them. Oh, God. Well, the, uh, the, 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 they're not transient, though, because they're, since they're, they're basically immortal, immortal creatures, I feel like they just kind of come and go from me. And they're not always the same ones, and I probably have names, but I can't. Do not make me think of a bunch of names of tardigrades, please. Uh, please. Look, I came up with names for my fingerlings. You could name your tart. I'll come. I'll have a list next time. Okay. Oh, I guess it's Bob and S Robert. Bobbert. <laughs> Bob, Robert, and Bobbert. All right. I guess this would be. Uh, I guess I think sneaky. I guess, or, or careful, but I'm not good at that. Or clever, I mean, it could be commanding. I'm commanding them to go, like, spread out, like, just be, like, in a circle around us, so if something comes near one, it'll, like, scream or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll, allow, I'll allow that. Okay. I'm gonna roll these actual dice. So that is, uh, two... Two hits, one minus, so that's going to be a um, three total. You tie with the target number, because oh. I rolled that one. So, when you tie... <laughs> well, I, I, I feel like, so I succeed with a cost? Yes, you succeed with a minor cost. Well, clearly, at least one of the targets gets, like... Eaten or so. like do, okay. Let me ask you this. So I'm on watch. Do I prevent something from happening, or do am I alerted to something happening? You are alerted to something happening. You are uh, alerted. one of the targets gets, gets gets eaten. That is the alert because <laughs> yes, you, you hear a, a very distressed sniffling noise as <laughs> one of the tardigrades is dragged off into the into the the darkness by. Oh, I had a name for mites. I had another name for them. Oh. <laughs> Because, like, fleas are called hoppers. I forget what I called the mites. But basically, mites have eaten one of your tardigrades, and they there's a lot of them. Uh, ah, I'm gonna wake up. 
<laughs> now here's a cool thing about fate. Initiative is not rolled for. You just pick who goes next after you take an action. Uh. Including your opponents. Uh, I'm going to say then it would be appropriate for the opponents to go next. Okay. Uh, so the scene is... Uh, what are, you have three tardigrades? Or you, you have two now? I have two now, but they come and go. Like you. Um, <laughs> where would everyone be sleep? I guess in a semicircle, I guess. Yep. <laughs> and the mites are all on all sides. Uh... I'm going to say, yes, so, uh, I'm going to say that you succeed in basically getting the alert out and waking everyone so they're not at disadvantage to, to act, but you lose the target grade as the cost. It's uh, a circle of life, I understand this. Yes. <laughs> so, the mites will act as one being, because they are a one thing, and they will... They will forcefully try to take down. Uh, I've already forgotten all your characters' names. Uh, they will forcefully take it down or try to take down Milnes. Mil Mil Jeff, your character. Oh no, <laughs> Milney. Milney. They are attacking with might. The S is silent. Great. That's not great. Uh, what? So, how do you defend? Um. Hmm. Well, they're just trying to swarm you forcefully. Uh, I am going to quickly get out of the way. I'm going to dodge and run around, just like all over the place, so they cannot get me with their, their gnashing mandibles or whatever. Okay. Uh, that is uh, it's a wash show cue. You <laughs> well, they they did the same thing and. Uh, oh. So you tie. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so in a tie, the attack gets a boost. Uh, so do you have, like, I guess a walking stick of some sort? Or, like, a shepherd's crook? Um, I have a whip. Hmm. It's a little string. Not even a strip of thread. It is it is a thread fiber. Yes. Uh... <laughs> uh I will say that you you are trying to to basically drive them off with your whip when one of them catches it in its mandibles and is like pulling at it trying to get it out of your hand. Uh, no, I need this. And the boost will be for the, for the mites uh, hanging by a thread. So the way the way boosts work is I get a free one and then it goes away and a, a free invoke. And I will choose. Uh, I will choose Dime to go next. Dime, you're up. All right, so Dime wakes up pretty quickly because she's always prepared for this sort Jesus of thing. Jesus is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you go out to the wilderness, mites are going to happen. You, you just, you, just no question. All right, so um, I'm going to... Let me see my character sheet. My sneak's pretty good, so I'm going to say that I'm going to create an advantage on one of them uh, by disguising myself with the corpse of the, um, oh, what's the thing called again? Tardigrade. It's a water bear. Tardigrade. The water bear. <laughs> the water bear. So, so you I basically wanted to get out of sight by dodging behind the water bear and then sneaking around to get the surprise on them? Yes. Okay. Because I don't think you have time to... Open it up like a tauntaun and climb it up. <laughs> I do not think that is time efficient. <laughs> I don't want to say what your character does, but... They have that's... very few organs inside them. Yeah, it's mostly liquid, I think. Did you <laughs> know that when a tardigrade is born, it has all the cells it's ever going to have, and it just gets bigger by... Did the cells get bigger? Wow. <laughs> all right. You can do this all the time? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Be better. <laughs> what do you think he wanted tardigrades? All right. So you're oh, actually, a sneaky, sneaky advantage for yourself. Yes, and I get a plus two to that, so that comes afterwards, right? Yes. Well, well right. you can apply it now, but it, yes, your stunt would apply. All right. So I guess I'll. Uh, so 
Let's roll uh, 6DF. Four. Four. Uh, okay. Now I'm just going to press the button, and then I'm going to worry about applying things, because I don't get this. Uh. You, you don't four add more. You always roll you four dice. Okay. Yeah. And then it's just like a plus after that, then? Yeah, you yes. add your bonuses from the stunts, aspects, and, and approaches. A three. Uh, that is a success. So uh, A four. It's a four. Oh, that's a four. Yes. Sorry. Wasn't looking. So that is that is a success. Um, so when you succeed at creating an advantage, you may uh, you can make a new aspect for the situation or reveal an aspect of an existing character that you're against, or or you can take an advantage of an existing aspect. We're not rivals in this game. Leave me alone. <laughs> so in this case, uh, I think you're creating an advantage for yourself. Yes. <laughs> a new situation advantage. Um, so basically, name an aspect that is appropriate, and you get a free invoke on your next action. Hmm. Or you can give that invoke to a, an ally. Ooh, I might actually give it to an ally, because I think if I use the water bear, uh, I might like uh, find some way to use it to distract the mites. You basically so, draw like, them around the water bear to yeah. draw some of their number off. Uh, yeah, so what's a, what's a snappy name for this aspect? Mm -hmm. I'm going to write this down because he's super useful. Decoy? Um, I tardigrade de decoy? Yeah, tardigrade decoy. I think that works. Yeah. And that has one free invoke on it. Now, who goes next? Because you get to decide who goes next now. Oh, um, hmm. I feel like uh, Selmy would probably be uh, the most likely to be up next. All right. <laughs> Selmy, super carpet warrior. Shut up, God. <laughs> <laughs> A warrior from the carpet. <laughs> Your hair stands up on end. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I can't give myself an avatar, but I will have an avatar next session, and y'all are going to love it. But for right so, now, I don't want people to see me messing with my computer. <laughs> are we, like, surrounded by tardigrades now, or... Can I... Mites. <laughs> Shit, yeah, mites. Can I, uh, approach them as a group, or are there too, too many of them? They, they act as a group. You, you you can act upon them as one single entity. All right. Hmm. I'm going to slowly walk towards them while insulting them and get ready to attack. You're basically going to do the thing from Jurassic Park where you wear, wave the flavor, flare around at the T-Rex. Get its attention. Kind of, except I'm not going to run away. I'm going to run towards them and punch them. You can you can have a weapon of some sort, just to scale. Um. Nah. I'm I'm gonna commit to my mistakes. Just gonna kick him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Punch, punch guy. You as a a prince of a merchant guild, even if the merchant guild is not around, you probably come armed with some sort of like weapon, but. Because you don't think of things through and act impulsively. <laughs> no fear. Actually, you know what? This will be a good time to compel you. I'm going to compel no fear so you do not use a weapon when you attack. Because you're just going to jump up and punch them. All right. Now, the way compels work. I compel you. You accept the compel. You do the thing that is detrimental to your, your, your thing. That gets you in trouble, basically. And you get a fake point. You don't have to take the compel. It is an option to say no. But I leave... leave I, I, I know in Fate Core that when you don't take the compel, you have to spend a fate point on not taking the compel. Uh, um, what exactly is the detriment? In the this detriment case? is that when you succeed on your attack, you will not do as much damage. Basically. 
All right. Uh, okay, hook a towel. Um, I'll just I'll just take the compel. Okay, so you get a fate point. I a fate point. But whatever damage you if, if you succeed, whatever damage you you do deal is going to be reduced in some way. All so, right. So I realize just, walking slowly doesn't sound very flashy, but I am trying to show off. You're you're just basically like going to build yourself up like yeah I'm a big badass I'm gonna I'm gonna fight you with my bare hands look at me might tell me can a might feel fear. <laughs> <laughs> well, roll it. Let's see. Is that good enough for flashy then? Uh, yeah. You're you're basically painting a huge target on yourself. I'd say that's flashy. <laughs> okay. Where's my my die? Ooh. God damn it. Uh oh. <laughs> well, I haven't rolled yet, but you have the opportunity to spend fate points now, or describe in some way that you make advantage. Make use of the situational aspect. Where, where did my cash thing go? Damn it, hold on. Oh, God damn it! I did the did thing. You, yeah, what you did, did you two. You put two pluses in that. So that's actually a. Um, yeah, let me fix that and then we'll th come no, back and. That, that's, that's a two. two. That's not that... terrible, but I haven't rolled yet to see how well they defend. I mean. Yeah, that's a minus one on the roll, then plus a three, so I got a two. They got a one. Nice. Ooh, okay. So you so succeed on an attack. So when you succeed on an attack, you deal damage, which is usually which is tracked by stress. Stress. Everyone, all the player characters at least, start with three boxes, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, NPCs can start with however many boxes I feel appropriate. I'm not telling you how many boxes, but when you deal damage, stress goes to which box? Basically, the difference between your attack and their defense is the damage you deal, and you fill in the box that you dealt. So if you deal uh, in... Yeah, it's the, bo it's the box oh. of that number, or if you can't, a higher, a higher number. Yes, you roll up. Yeah. So, um, so when you deal one stress... It goes to their first stress box. If that's filled in, it goes to their second. And if all of their boxes are filled in, or that are, are higher at least, um, they take consequence. Consequences are basically aspects that, in exchange for removing your stress, it's another aspect I get to use against you for free, basically. They're bad things. Don't get consequences if you can help it. Uh, all right. But you do fill in their first stress box. <clears throat> you, you basically like run up to the mites and they sort of like bunch up together like they're about to get uh, rush you and then you just punt one of them off into the distance <laughs> i imagine uh, i like pick one up and start beating the others with him yeah it doesn't do you, doesn't do a whole lot necessarily because yeah there's, there's sort of kindness <laughs> But you are keeping them so, uh, some of them busy. So who goes next? Um, let me pull up the character names. Uh, Shara has not gone yet. I have I not Shara gone yet. I have not gone yet. All right. So Let's see what your bag of tricks can do. <sighs> hmm. So while uh, Somi has gotten all of their attention, I'm gonna sneak around behind them. And make a like. I guess I'm gonna backstab them um, with my dual daggers, which are made out of discarded toenail. Gross. Not yep. discarded toenail. Shards of discarded toenail. Yep, shards of discarded toenail. So I'm gonna like back attack them with my shards of toenail. Oh, it's the nail sword. It's yeah, the it's the nail sword. sword. I'm oh, fucking Hollow Knight. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> But I've got two daggers, and I'm gonna from, made from toenail, not from nail nail. And I'm gonna stabby stab. So I'm gonna hopefully do this sneakily, I'm sneaking around behind them while they're distracted. Nice. Uh, wow. Dang. That's a good roll. Jesus. 
<laughs> Shara's, oh, oh. Shara's things are in peril. <laughs> that is success with style. Oh, man. <laughs> so you deal, they rolled a two. Oh, God. <laughs> they don't have a fourth stress box. <laughs> So Shara so... just does like a like a freaking she climbs up some of the, like she climbs up a little bit of of the the carpet. She does like a flying leap. Oh, uh, like slams down <laughs> onto one. Don't touch my I things. Think... <laughs> I picture you saw me monologuing at that one and then he dies it dies. He's just like, oh god. <laughs> uh, I think because because you dealt so much stress in one go, god damn it. Um I'm you, sorry. You this rate, one of them, and the rest are like, uh, they, they are wild animals, so they, they recognize like, okay, this is something that we can't take down without damage to ourselves. We're getting out of here. We got one tartar aid. That's good enough. Let's go. And they flee. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. They flee. <laughs> nice. <laughs> sure, <laughs> standing there like hyperventilating, like g bug guts on her daggers, just like. <laughs> Don't touch my things! <laughs> I imagine that you just woke up, bolt upright, grabbed your dagger, stabbed the first thing you saw, and then go back to sleep. <laughs> she goes back to her basket and checks it, like, like goes through it and checks everything and pulls out like a little scrap of paper and catalogs like everything she has to make sure that everything she has is What's still there. Paper? Yeah, yeah. You know, like a, sh like, like a shred of tissue, like... T tr trust me, people drop little shreds of paper around, like a receipt. You know, we tore off like a corner of a receipt, and like like coal or or pencil lead from a mechanical pencil that dropped. She could shave off a bit of that to to write on it. I've I've dropped those things in this house myself. Damn it! I will accept it. This is su sufficient world building. <laughs> it's it's a, a tiny piece of confetti. Yeah, it's it's a bit of receipt oh, that. Yeah. I know what mirrors are made of. You know what mirrors water made, are of? made of? Glitter. Mirrors are uh, made of glitter. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So anyway, once she's made sure that everything is, she has, everything she settles in, and 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 um. Oh God, uh, she's got to collect something from the thing she killed. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. So she's standing over the thing, like, rubbing her chin, thinking about it. <laughs> now, here's another form of compel. You can compel yourself if you feel it's appropriate, and I will give you a fate point for doing something that is not necessarily going to progress you or get you what you want necessarily or make your life complicated. You don't have to spend a fate point to ignore the compel but because you're basically doing it to yourself. So if you're compelling yourself in this case, this would be one of your fate, or your aspects that are appropriate. She's, yes, she's so inquisitive. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go full creepy with this character. What's its yeah. insides look like? She just, like, starts... Can I make a hat out of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I will say that, like, you don't get much sleep after this because you're just going to stay up for longer dissecting a mite. And, yep. Like, Figuring it, figuring it out. Yep. <laughs> You're the creepiest little. Have a fake point. I'll add it to my fake points. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> no, this is a good way to learn the system. We we learn by doing. I'm sorry that uh, I rolled so well, like right out the gate. <laughs> no, that's usually how fake goes, because it's it can be kind of swingy. Because uh, mm -hmm. you have a range of numbers from plus four to minus four. Yeah, and and, and from what I've seen, like the the point of like a lot of the times in like encounters like this, your goal is is to like accumulate a whole bunch of advantages so you can get a really big number and just like obliterate. One shot. Yeah, because yeah. there's no, there's not. I don't think there's a limit on how many. Well, okay, technically there's a limit to number of advantages you can apply to a given action. But you can invoke an aspect on yourself, the situation, your opponent, uh, all at the same time. Yeah. I think it's a limit of one aspect per thing, but that's a lot of things you can add up together. We'll figure it out. Um, so, yeah. And and I don't I'm going to say this now before I start planning future encounters. NPCs might have 
fate points to spend as well. Ooh. Yeah. So I don't know That's... how creepy Shara is to everybody else, but I'm creepy. You probably smell bad. It's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but I feel like like the fate points for the enemy NBC is always like a pool for all of them, and not necessarily they each have the individual ones. I don't know. Yeah, that's okay. that's usually how I do it. Uh, yeah, NPC groups will have fate points. The only okay. people who are like important enough to have their own fate points usually are like bosses, kind of thing. Oh. At least in my worlds. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Boss. the night passes. Don't argue. Don't 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 don't. <laughs> We're going to get into this later. <laughs> really dig into this. I hate it. We will have a discussion. Uh, and you can you can get back on the trail and reach Matchhead. Matchhead, so named for the... the uh, well, what once was a full Matchhead. Uh, it has been a long time since that Matchhead fell. And it has been mined a lot. There is not... There's about a quarter of a match head left. It's still there. Um, the houses are made of the match stick that is be- underneath the match head. So there's a lot of wood actually being used, which is technically rare, I guess, as matches don't come up often. Um, match head was once known for being the, the center of alchemy in the, in the, the empire uh, because that's a lot of sulfur. We could use that for things like... I don't know, burning shit. Um, so there is sort of a, a really bad, like really off-putting smell to the whole place, even even apart from from Shara covered in mite juice. <laughs> well, it, it, it'd be all um uh, uh uh like phosphorus, and so it it smells like fertilizer. Yeah. It's probably really a really strong burning kind of smell, like the yeah, kind that yeah. gets in your nostrils and does not go away until you can't smell anything else. Uh, I haven't started match heads, so I don't know. Uh, uh, Wikipedia says er, they ignite due to extreme reactivity of phosphorus with the potassium chloride in the match head. That and this they is mix match and head they match facts. explode. Boom. And so this is yeah, a- I guess instead of gunpowder, they use match stuff. Yeah. This is a um, this is a city made of wood out of incredibly combustible material. I'm not, sure. Not a city. I would say a, a small. Like a small. hamlet. Yeah. Yeah. Still very, Wait. very, very smart. Very good. You could say it's a powder keg. <laughs> well, the amount of friction required to set off a match head is probably greater than what what you tiny people can create. Right. You can scrape off bits and then ignite that yourself, but it's not going to be explosive like the whole thing going up. Right. Uh, and this match head has been here a while, so they know how to handle it safely. Um, but as you approach, you see uh, several people dressed in what you assume might be like guards' uniform. It, it's kind of they, they, they. There are two of them. Neither of their uniforms matches the other. It's sort of like thrown together. And, and they are holding spears, and they are looking quite grumpily at, in your direction. Oh, so which of you lie, and which one tells the truth? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> who, who are you? Take your uh, business. Uh, I, I am, I am Milne, the, the traveling tamer of all beasts. You say petting one? Yes. <laughs> what do you want here? We we don't like strangers around these parts. Never seen you before. Uh, I, I look at I look at the, the prince. <laughs> the prince of all Fritos. Are you are you in charge? No, I don't <laughs> Fritos. All right, stand aside. Did we ever have a name for our village? Oh uh, no. It was Wayside. I just named it. You're welcome. It, it was Frayside. Frayside. The carpet they, frayed. Yeah, well, I like it. Was it was originally called Wayside, and then the fray started coming, and people started nicknaming it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you remind me what the exact question is before I start answering it? Who are you? We don't like strangers here. State your business. 
I am so. <laughs> I am so many of the prince of the Freetons. These are the people of Frey side. They're looking for refuge from the fray. Don't have room. We're just passing through. Good. <laughs> Just passed through. Thank you, Shara. We just passed through. Just passed through, they say. Oh, not like they're bringing the apocalypse with them. We know what the fray is. How how can we tell that you ain't bringing it with you? Uh, well, do you see it following us? Are they threatening my things? <laughs> you no, know, they're just you, threatening sure, not to sure. in. You, you know what the fray is? What is it? What do you think it is? It's the phrase bad it's brought on by them cultists Col huh it's the first i've heard of this do we look like cultists do i look like a cultist covered in bug guts maybe i do maybe i do look like a cultist i'm not a cultist i'm sorry that i look sure, like a cultist been waiting in the back while we talk to these people are you sure i'm not a cultist could i could be i could become a cultist at any moment sure sure can you, can you just just go wait over there. Play with the tardigrades, dear. <laughs> Ooh, what do their insides look like? You can see their insides if you look. Oh, uh, she presses her face it's right like up against it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> to be a I prince. ain't heard of never and no Freetan babysitter. <laughs> Where is Freetan anyway? <laughs> he starts crying. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that is that is so rude. It no longer exists. How would you say something like that to, to my friend here? I would I would like to roll. Are I you would trying like to, to like basically get some pity out of them by uh, taking I, advantage of your friend breaking down in tears? Yeah, I want I want to overcome by cleverly making them feel bad about what they just said. You're basically gonna guilt them into it, huh? Yeah, you offended yes. him. Okay, uh, clever work. Yep. Ooh, that is a five. I got three that. hits and no minuses, plus the two. Mm, they got a three, so it is not a success with style. But can can I spend a fate? Oh, so what is spending? What I spend for an aspect? What does it do? How do I? How you do basically I... describe how the aspect applies to the situation to give you the bonus, and you spend a fate point on it, and you get a plus two or a reroll. Can I evoke someone else's aspect? Um, not usually. But I want to uh, hear what he's thinking. <laughs> what is your plan? Hmm. Mm, I I don't have anything right now to evoke them, so never mind. I'll just take the. But but what was aspect. your plan? I want to know who's expert. Uh, uh, I, I, that, that's oh. the main. That, that's one of the purposes of creative advantage is to reveal aspects about your opponent that you mm -hmm. can use against them. Yeah, so I, I didn't do that. I, don't, I, just, I just, I beat them, though. Yes, you did succeed. So, like, like one of them, like, turns to the other. It's like, look, Derek, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're, they're going to do anything bad. I mean, the fray's coming. People are going to run away from it. Like, it makes sense that we start seeing refugees, right? Like, most of the people have left here anyway, so just let them stay a night or two. Oh, so there is space, because people have left. Like, one of the, the other one is like, God damn it. <laughs> you and your big mouth. Yeah. We don't have space for everyone to stay, but if you're just passing through, you could probably just join the people and leave it as well. Cowards. Whoa, I would say Who your pride is. I would say your pride is on the line. Show me. Show me, sorry. <laughs> Actually, yeah, your pride is on the line. And this that's not one of my aspects, though. Oh, that's true. That's not a compel-worthy thing. Ah, uh, shoot. No, I guess... Hmm. You could finagle it into a compel, I bet. You have an inferiority complex that is gigantic. God damn it. <laughs> Would you like to be compelled to make an ass of yourself and berate these poor guards? Do I have to spend a fate point to avoid it? Yes. When I compel you, you have to spend a fate point or you get a fate point. When you compel yourself, you can get a fate point or not to not get a fate point. Also, you said berate, right? Berate, yeah. You're yeah. basically going to yell at them for a lot, for a while. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> as long as I'm not physically assaulting them, I will take this. No, 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 no. You're you're basically going to tell them the, the glory of the Freetons, uh, the or the Freetons, how mm -hmm. how mighty your 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 power was. <laughs> the greatest warriors in all the carpet. Oh. <laughs> Is he from the race of giant er, uh, of the of the carpet? <laughs> I keep getting space and carpet mixed up now. <laughs> Super carpet warriors. <laughs> the legendary warrior of carpet. <laughs> Big Frita dead? Stop. <laughs> I start making fun of myself for a little bit, and y'all just fucking jump in. <laughs> I, I stay down. Oh, I can drag myself. <laughs> I, I think. I think for the rest, for the rest of the hour, you're going to be outside of the the, the town. Talking to these guards, basically talking at them while everyone um, else goes inside and, and finds things. So, um, what is around here that isn't bolted down? You are not. Do not steal every. You don't get to take everything you see. Goddamn. No, it. but what can I? Can I take something? Something shiny. What here is shiny? You could trade. No, no trade. I mean, I could. I could roll sneaky. Um, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Wow. Time to get kicked out of the village immediately. Wow, you, are you are painting a poor image of refugees, you realize. <laughs> okay. Um, I could trade, but is there what what appeals to me? What would what, what what does the marketplace have? Do you have any match powder? Hmm. I don't think you do. I think it's not that common. It's pretty rare. That's true. Um it could be useful. I have some. Hmm. I'm gonna haggle with that. I will allow you to. I will allow you to roll to overcome an obstacle, to have a have something of of intrinsic value that someone wants that they will give you a bag of match. I have for. like a scrap of fat, like a tiny bit of fabric, like you know, um, and it, and it's 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 tied. It's like a piece of. It's the two corners of like a bit of tie dye where the colors blend, so it looks really cool. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like this, that piece in between? And it really yeah. in interests the person. And this is going to be a clever roll, and it's somebody trying to touch my things. So I'm going to add plus two to this. That is only when you're defending your stuff. Oh, only defending. Okay, well then never mind. Just a regular well, clever roll. Uh, well, let, does, do you consider that, 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 uh, that bag of match powder one of your things already? <laughs> Dreadmaster uh, right no, no, already yours, said yeah. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to just say, "Oh, it's mine now," because <laughs> because I would, you, I one hundred percent would. <laughs> I would say this is a good opportunity to invoke one of your aspects, because you could lead off by saying, "Look at this stuff, isn't it neat?" Yep, I will. <laughs> I will invoke. Uh, well, got it. Oh yeah, I, I will invoke. Uh, check check out this piece of fabric that I got from a tie dye shirt. This so is gonna be... you can so you spend a fate point and yep. you can decide after you roll to add plus two or re-roll. Okay, here we go. Um, I will. Oh shoot, I'll add plus two. So that's a four. That is a success. Okay, you, you do succeed. You, All right. you get the match powder. I will say this counts as as a this can be used as to create. Uh, this can be used as a bonus to create an advantage in some way that involves fire. Okay. Um, I burned down the city. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I thank them very much, and then as I'm leaving, I take my piece of cloth back. It was mine. Give me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What a shitty thing to do. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 the pain was showing them it, not giving it to them. You don't have to be so obsessive that you're unwilling to give up anything. I think you're willing to trade interesting things for interesting things. Okay, yeah, okay, you, okay. You're fine. trading up. You got a more interesting thing. That's yeah, true. Okay, okay. Thing. Talk to, fine. A useful, talk, interesting thing. Talk me out of my hoarding. It's fine. This is <laughs> I'm next... talking you out of being a sociopath. <laughs> next, next, <laughs> next session. Sure, it's an episode of Hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, is there anything else? Anyone does anyone else want to do anything in in the town that I have not fully fleshed out in my brain space? Oh uh, yes, I would like to peddle my wares, which are the trained 
menagerie of, of tardigrades that just like come through my life. And you already have a third quickly. one again. I, oh can, yes. Can you yeah, aid absolutely. another in this? Like, can I assist uh, him? Yeah, you create advantages. Okay. Yeah, you create advantages to aid another. I've done a lot already, but but so go ahead and do your thing. But I just my character's gonna be standing there, not rolling anything to help you, but just being like, they've got nothing inside of them. It's so cool. <laughs> you're no, no, he's going to be showing off his tardigrades. You're gonna be pressing your face against them to look at the cool shapes inside. <laughs> Yes. They're like giant walking lava lamps. It's really cool. Anyway, that's that's so what I'm gonna what, do. I'm sorry for having you, the scene. What are you um basically how are you selling not selling, but like you're you're basically marketing the services of your tardigrades as beast of burden, right? Um yes, as beast of burden as companions, as uh protection animals. Um uh, I would say that there is a non-zero chance that someone would be interested in that, but you have to, uh, you would have to like convince them that they need it more than whatever they're willing to give. Yes, you for. and and, th and that's the thing. Like, I'm not so much con uh, uh, worried about getting things. Like, I want to make the, I want to spread the gospel of. The <laughs> <program. laughs> I don't think you're going to, to have any change? opposition to this. Change your thing to tardigrade to missionary. <laughs> Sorry. I want on. you to roll to see how how well you do at being a prosthesize prosthesizing the tardigrade. All right, uh, I'm gonna do clever. I think this and is can... flashy, actually. Oh, flashy. Okay, and I can decide to invoke after, right? So yes. Happens. Okay. Um, that is a net two. You gonna evoke anything? Um, do I get to know if I succeeded that before I do that? Um, I don't I'll know you, the rules. I would say you barely succeed with the two. Like, people hear you, but you don't get any, like, diehard converts right away. Alright, I'll, I'll invoke my, my traveling tardigrade aspect. <laughs> Spend that pay point. I did. Okay, I did it. so, so that's you, a four. you... You do find a, a fellow friend of Tardigrades who 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 graciously uh, leads off one of your, your tamed friends to to help him with whatever he's doing. Yes. It's not important. Tell tell your friends. <laughs> he takes it to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> wink and, wink. And another one just shows up. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. You find a tardigrade, it's not moving, you're wondering why. Oh no, it's an egg. <laughs> God, it's like a cicada, but reversed. Yeah. Yeah, no, like like I said, it, it sheds its skin, and then in the old skin are all the eggs. Oh. It's so, so cool. <laughs> oh. Um, You do get asked by... Okay, back to uh, Somi, after you're done... <laughs> Oh, I'm not still yelling at those two. I'm gonna say after about an hour, you're done, or at least you run out of breath. Damn, I lost track of them. <laughs> Which got away from me. They sneak so, off because you just get so into your vitriol. They just kind of sneak no, off while you're yelling. Actually, they're, they're can perfect. I can I say that um that thing um let's say it created an uh an advantage for our future interactions in the town. How about that? Yeah, Except I'll like, say that you I have... did, Otherwise, it did nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll say that there's a temporary advantage on the town that is... Uh, 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 friendly merchants? Yes. Yeah. Um, back to the guards. The guards can't leave. You are basically doing the horrible thing to a service person where they are... Oh, god damn it. It's their job to stand there, and you are yelling at them, and it's not fun. So after you're done, or at least you run out of breath, one of them says, is the entire might of the Freetons kingdom going to be coming through? Because that's a lot, it sounds like. <laughs> yes, yes it is. It's all me now. Thanks for reminding me of that, asshole. <laughs> and it's like off. Wait, 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 wait. No. Who else? Then who? Who are we expecting to come through? You said there were refugees. I thought the, uh, I thought they'd come through already. No, they're falling behind you. You're leading. Yeah. You're leading them. Essentially, you're you're acting uh, as a trailhead. 
People right. of Wayside. It's a different village. Wait, Wayside still exists? Well, not anymore. Now they all left. Well, I mean, you can't... I mean, the people are still of Wayside, so, I mean, Wayside's not gone until they're all gone, so... Well, all of them? Everyone? Yes. Are things... Are things getting that bad? Obviously. Should we leave, too? I love their you little should... noises. Sorry, I'm just still over <laughs> here with the dark red. You should probably talk to the mayor, then. This sounds dire. All right. But um, first, do you know where I can get uh, some honeyed water or something? What's honey? God damn it. <laughs> like, like <laughs> how would, how honey? How do they even get water? Yeah. Moisture. There's, there's moisture. Carpets there's, absorb moisture. And yeah, there's sweat. Those fibers, I guess. And, yeah. You have, uh, oh God, there are moisture farmers. God, I, I'm so glad I have hardwood floors in my house. <laughs> yeah, think of the tiny civilizations you could step on. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll go talk to the mayor, but first I need a drink of water. Yeah, sugar oh, sugar God, granules, yeah. Sugar mm -hmm. granules probably fall under the ground, so they might have some sugar. sugar you know what's water. probably more common on the carpet than water? What? Wine. Yeah. Soda. Because no, you can't get yes. that out. Get, get that wine. But yeah, uh, you after getting a drink from, I'm gonna say, quote unquote, water well, whatever. Um, you do get, you 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 can go find the mayor. Uh, the mayor is not hard to find because biggest pest, whatever. Uh, they are are seated. Uh, they are standing actually at like a standing desk. Uh, and they are going over some papers or notes. Mm. They they don't even notice you come in. I think before we do the mayor thing, maybe Dime should do something to Yeah, control. Dime hasn't oh, done Dime, anything yes. yet. In this situation. Dime, what are you doing? Because there's been an hour between yelling at guards and going to mayor, so <laughs> we can say that you do something before he goes to the mayor. Um, hmm. You gotta help our I reputation. Th I think she's just, like, uh, looking on the other side of town, investigating uh, what the trail's like there. She's not venturing too far. She's just, like, testing the waters. She's asking around, planning ahead. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I think this is a careful roll. All Three, right. An advantage. All right. Boop. That's one. Mm. I don't think you succeed on them. That's a, not a great roll. Yeah. Nope. Uh... Either you don't create or discover a new aspect, or you discover an aspect that an opponent gets to use against. Hmm. Um. The latter is probably more interesting, so I'm going to say that I discover that there's something dangerous about uh, that side of the trail. I think... Yeah, I think um, beyond... Matchhead, further to the west and south. Um, like, you heard the guards mention cultists, and everyone you ask about that have traveled any farther west than here have given you, like, yeah, uh, I saw some weird things. I'm not sure they're even people, man. They're, they don't look right. They were skulking about in, in, in between the carpet trees. And so, the the uh, aspect that you find that you can't use is cults among us, and that might come up later. Oh no! Oh man! I guess <laughs> since we can't use it, I don't get to be a cultist. The, the are, these are cultists. These are literal doomsday cultists. They worship the fray. Oh you said well. You weren't going to be a traitor this game. I did say I was not going to be a traitor. I will I, I am, be horny. I won't allow you to be a traitor. I am a traitor <laughs> with a D. Yes. Uh, but I, I think I think that, that, is, that is your time spent in town. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. mayor time. 
and oh I god, think why am I in this important position? Oh no. Um, you, 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 you took the hook, so... <laughs> you you also fit the character of a nobility type. I want to. Yeah. Can I also be there because my curiosity has sent me here to look at the cool stuff that the mayor has. You can you can be with uh, with him. I, yeah. I will not say this is worth a compel though. No no no. I'm not going to compel. It's just my, I'm not saying my computer curiosity was compelling enough. I'm not going to compel myself. Just I'm here. You know, because because it's pretty it's shiny, but not because I was compelled. Just I just happen to be here too. That's all. Well, you all you are also traveling with Somi, the yeah. prince of all free tens. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. I, I got I got some of the Bernie stuff. Look at my stuff. Look at Isn't my it stuff. Neat? Isn't it neat? Check out my yes, stuff. Yes, it's all nice. It's my all stuff. Great. My stuff is so good. Oh, he said it was great. <laughs> my voice keeps rising in octave as I talk. Does Every ten, does does Somi ever smile? <laughs> no. Oh, but he smiles when he fights sometimes, but it's and like she, a scary smile. She gets, she gets increasingly, increasingly excited as she talks about all the cool things she could possibly do with this thing. And Trill's voice gets so high pitched that you can't even hear it anymore because it keeps raising an octave every time she says something. Uh, until she it's runs a, out of breath. It's and has it's to like, <laughs> she becomes a dog whistle. <laughs> What's a dog? Shush, a tardigrade whistle. We do not talk about the dogs. It once destroyed an entire civilization. It was a flood for 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> so anyway, we, we show up at the mayor's house. Go mayor. Uh, Yeah, the mayor has not noticed you come in. He, he's working on some papers. Ah, <clears throat> uh, Just leave him at the inbox. I, I think Is I'm he threatening my thing? No, sorry, go ahead. Hold on, I've got this. You say the desk? The standing desk? Yeah, it's the standing desk. I walk up and slam my hand on top of it. Well, excuse... Who are you? What? What? Why are you interrupting my work? I am Prince Sobe. I'm here on behalf of the people of Wayside. I pull out a little bugle. I put it back. <laughs> <laughs> and what? Thank you, Shara. What business is so important to interrupt my book bookkeeping? Prince. We're evading the fray. I was <laughs> evading the fray. Thank you, Shara. And what? Good for you. Sorry, can you say that again? I said Good for you? What are you... I was told by our guards you want to know that. Well, yes, I... The fray is on everyone's mind of late, but... Unless you really think it's important to pack up and leave, it seems like I... You don't really have anything for me to be concerned about. Like, should we? Like, make me the argument. I feel like I, the player, don't have enough information to make this argument. You would uh, have the information that, like, uh, Prismire, the shaman, the prophet, that, that that told everyone about we should get up and go because doom is coming, mm -hmm. is is well known for being a soothsayer and for, fortune teller. You could drop a name, his name, and he would recognize it. You could create an advantage and then convince him. Yes. Does Char okay. maybe have a copy of his mystic to <laughs> the predictions in her shit? You probably wouldn't have a copy. You would just have it orally memorized. Do no, does Char and the Hoarder have? Uh, no. He probably doesn't write things down. Because Soothsayer, whatever. All right. Um, Why? Damn Why, Char? Why? Then I'm going to name drop. Um, I forgot his name. Was it Prismire? Prismire. I'm going to say Prismire told us the fray was coming and to get out of the way. Uh, do you want to use this as to create an advantage or do you want to overcome this? Um. It could go either way, I think. Oh. 
feel like we've already created two advantages or one advantage. Let me try and overcome. Okay. This. Um, I feel like I'm being forceful, but I don't know. I don't know if we could be forceful it, with. It was sort of a forceful introduction you made there. <laughs> and that seems like your right. personality type. All right. Hmm. Would you like it now? That advantage, the uh, friendly traders advantage or friendly merchants. Mm -hmm. Always, it, when you create an advantage like that, you get a free and anyone who gets to use it gets to free invoke the first time. So you can just bump that up to a four if you want. All right, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I mean, then you do not. succeed. Um, they could also hit a fate point and do one of your aspects and get up to a six. Then you would <laughs> succeed with style. Um, I'm, your honor yeah, is on the line. Excess. So I'm going, I've not spent a pay point yet, so I'm going to do that. And this would totally be within your honors within the, on, well, that's your stunt, but. That's uh, only for his hacks. Yeah. Uh, we're coming. But this is, uh, this is definitely helping your inferiority complex. Yes. Because it's making you feel superior to this guy. Uh, I think, I think you're, 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 <laughs> your, um, your high concept, the, as a merchant prince. A prince, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I'm supposed just, to be doing. Uh, so that so is just running around <laughs> fucking out of mites. Look, man, mites eat tardigrades, and tardigrades are bigger than you, so they can eat you too. <laughs> um, Only some are. Some are smaller. They vary. So, uh, so succeeding with style and overcome means I accomplish my goal and generate a boost? Yes. So another temporary advantage. I would say this is like you you can uh your arguments like convince him so well that he is willing to pa get things ready and so when the uh the when the wagons from wayside arrive the match head will join them and so Great. i'll say more uh, people to babysit but they are going to be bringing their specialized materials more people to save so i'm going to say that in exchange for successfully convincing them so well, um, should you ever, uh, when you meet up with the caravan after this, um, there is a free, a free use of match powder for each of you as as a boost. Oh, cool! Hmm. I didn't have In to trade future. for it in the first place. Crap! Go give well, me my thing back. You only get the first one free for for from this one. Ah, okay. So now I get double match. I could trade that match powder for something else cool. It's fine. It's fine. It'd be good. Uh, yes, yes. I, I see now that you have wisdom in leaving. I, I, I apologize for trying to brush you off earlier. Where, as you think. where are you going next? I mean, are you? We've. Uh, I mean, there's there's the cults rumors, but. Honestly, I'd be kind of worried about Empire Patrols now. Why would you be worried about that? Well, I suppose since you're so far away, the Empire, they're, they're conscripting. They're um, forcefully appropriating materials for their war efforts. It seems that the people from the southern chair leg are... Uh, encroaching on Xiandian land and apparently because this these the, the towns in this area were once part of the empire they owe it to the empire to give them able-bodied people to join for the war i it it's total nonsense but they still have a military and it's frightening really how how low they'll stoop to to satisfy their imperialistic greed it's i if you plan to head if we if your plan is to head further west i i i i would warn you about the the empire hmm. sounds like a bridge we'll have to cross when we come to it what's a bridge for now for now we're going to stick to the plan keep going west they would have to go over things like they there must be like spots in the match that they mine down they had to like make a bridge over come on i wouldn't call it a bridge then it'd be a scaffolding Ugh. 
It's the capital thing we'll cross when we come to it. We know what bridges uh, are, just because they don't. I'll be honest, I don't have much planned after this, so I think <laughs> for a first session, this is a good opportunity to to end. It's a little early. <laughs> That's fine. It's good. So what, We've what, gone uh, over plenty of times, so there's no harm in ending a little early. <laughs> we yeah, have... So what did everyone think? I think I I'm getting adjusted to the system. It, fate does take some adjusting to get your head around to, like, use aspects. And Oh, speaking of which, um, technically there isn't really full-on advancement in Fate, but with Fate Accelerated, because you get the first three stunts free, you don't have to make them all at once. <gasps> um, How dare you? Sorry, go on. <laughs> technically, we could, um, you could each come up with a new stunt be uh, from the actions that you took during this session, if you would like. You don't have to. You can do this at a later date. Because I'm always prepared, <laughs> I get a plus two bonus when I flashily play my bugle to, to distract an enemy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that was really funny, though. <laughs> I had to stop Please do because... that for the rest of Please yes. do that for the rest of the campaign. Every time somebody Actually, says Prince character... Zombie. My, my, char my character, every time your character introduces herself, my character's gonna be there going, <laughs> <laughs> She's a merchant, All too. Right, it's a so, sneaking mission. So we need like... you, Prince Somi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we've been caught. <laughs> Dang. I was gonna say, in character, um, you're saving these people. You could be the savior of, of, of all uh, carpet people. That could be your legacy. Would be what my character says for, in a moment of thoughtfulness before <laughs> she notices that the mayor has ink and, and, and tries to sneak it. Like, oh my gosh, give me that ink. <laughs> Imagine how valuable ink is. Bro. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, would you even need it at that point? If it's that rare, it's, it, I, you yes, found I, some other you way to even write. know me? Do you even know me, Dime? <laughs> yes! <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> it belongs. Up with any new stunts right now. Um, <laughs> we can. We can. Do yeah, that. I might think of one before <laughs> next week, but I can't think of one right now. D I also, kind of um, can, but I don't know if it applies from this session because at some point I wanted to do like because I wield splinter, uh, I can like think of and think like an ant to do a thing. Oh, interesting. Do you, uh, to get an ant to do a thing? No, no think, think like, like an, an ant. So... Think like an ant. You can leave a good trail behind you like ants do. That's how, how ants do it. They leave a scent trail behind them. Uh, also, so you can um, forge You can forge more, more followable trails. You create better advantages when forging a trail. That's, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so because I wield the ant-scented blade, uh, when I... I don't when, know which approach. When, when you try to create an advantage by forging a trail, yeah, um, you get a plus two to doing that. You you get a plus two uh, to doing that. In whichever approach you choose. Yeah, to in a, whatever approach you choose maybe, to, carefully, maybe, maybe or forcefully. Yeah, forceful. Yeah, because you're basically like yeah. cutting a path at that. Point. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, you also don't also remember. You can come up with new aspects as well. Uh, you can have up to five, or you, you have room for two more, basically. Um, if you want to come up with one based on this session, or one that is sort of fleshes out your character's backstory some more, we can do that off mic in the Discord. But yeah, yeah, I think yeah. This went fairly this well fun. for, for a first session for everyone. I'm sorry if I was a yeah. little exuberant and everywhere, but I, I always get super You're into character, exuberant. and I'm always yeah, exuberant. Just, just stop apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to see Loika roleplay. Yeah, it was. This hopefully, it was more fun than embarrassing. <laughs> hopefully, I'm like um, self aware enough as shitty knockoff Vegeta to be funny and not just. <laughs> it's good. You know, I think I think as a character concept, Vegeta has the most room for growth. Yeah. <laughs> It, it sets a rich world up to, to dig into. Yep. Truly the most complex character in Dragon Ball. <laughs> he, 
He is, though. Yeah. He is. He's, that's okay. why. Okay. It's not that I don't want to have this uh, deep conversation about Dragon Ball lore, but can we stop streaming so it's not recorded? <laughs> hey, uh, okay, guys. Um, I guess we're going to stop streaming now. Bye. 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 Bye.